In this lesson, we're going to look at how to analyze the graph of a function. So we're going to look at some different features or properties of the graphs. First thing we're going to look at is something called continuity. So basically what this means is, is the graph continuous or does it have some kind of discontinuity? So continuous basically just means that if I start at one point in the graph, can I trace the entire graph without having to pick up my pen or pencil? That means my graph is continuous. So when you look at this first one, this is continuous for this entire domain because I can trace the graph without having to ever pick up and move my pen or pencil. Um, the next one here is has a removable discontinuity because if you look I can trace and then I have to stop because there's a hole there and then I can pick back up and continue but since this is just one point or one hole in the graph I can patch that hole by picking another point. So if you look here, I have another point that kind of replaces this. So this is called removable because we can patch the hole by redefining f of a um, or defining a new point. This example here, again, is removable discontinuity, but this one we do not have. We did not patch or we did not redefine f of a. So those are basically both removable discontinuity because it's just one point. Um, and then the next one here is called a jump discontinuity because my graph basically jumps. So I have to go all the way up here to continue it. And we can't fix this discontinuity because there's more than just one point. So it's not removable because there's more than just a hole um, missing. There's a whole chunk there that's missing. And then this last one is called an infinite discontinuity because there's an infinite number of points along x equaling a that are not included. So I go down, then I pick back up on the right-hand side, but it's infinite because this is actually called an asymptote. So this line right here is an asymptote at x equaling a. So because of the infinite discontinuity, that's why I have an asymptote. So let's look at some examples using these continuity definitions. So this first one here, we have this function, and it's asking us to describe the continuity. So if you look, there's going to be this asymptote at x equals 2 that my graph will never cross. So this is going to be an infinite discontinuity because of the asymptote. At that asymptote, at x equals 2. So this is not removable because it's more than just one hole missing. This graph here is continuous. It keeps on going. I don't ever have to pick up my pen or pencil for all the x values. And this last one here, there's one hole right here. So since I have a hole in the graph, that tells me that this is a removable discontinuity because you could patch it. And that's at x equals 2, that point. So that's continuity. The next thing we're going to look at is increasing, decreasing, or constant. So where the function's increasing, decreasing, or constant. So increasing means the function's going up. So if you look, it's going up. Decreasing, the function, the y values are going down as x gets bigger. Constant means the y values are staying exactly the same. And then you can have a mix. So like this graph here, it's decreasing because it's going down. Then it stays constant, and then it starts to increase. So if we look at this example here, we want to figure out where it's increasing, decreasing, and constant. There's no sections here where my graph is constant, so I'm not going to worry about that. But basically, this portion of my graph is going up as x is getting bigger. So we always look at it as x is getting bigger. What are the y values doing? y values are getting bigger as x is getting bigger. So this is going to be an interval. And remember that this graph really has arrows on it, so it's going to keep on going. So increasing is going to be on negative infinity to negative 2. 
And then it's going to pick back up with increasing right about here. And this is going up as well. So from positive 2 to infinity. So when I'm writing my intervals, I'm writing them using interval notation. So I'm using open brackets here. Um, you could use closed brackets. It really just depends on how you want to define it. I'm using open just because I'm saying, okay, it's increasing until negative 2 not including negative 2, and then it picks up increasing on 2, not including 2. Um, so remember, these are the x values, so this means all, so from negative infinity up to negative 2, my graph is going up, and then from 2 on, my graph is still going up. And then decreasing is going to be this section here. So it's decreasing between negative 2, so the x value is negative 2 to 2. And again, I'm just going to always use open brackets. I know this example up here uses closed brackets, but you could make these open if you want as well um, for increasing or decreasing. I think it's easier just to always use open brackets and you don't have to worry about it. Remember, open brackets are the round ones. It means it doesn't include the numbers, where the square, square brackets are the ones that include the numbers. So I would just go with open for those. So then the next category that we're going to look at is going to be positive versus negative. So this means where the y values are positive and where the y values are negative. So when we're looking at positive or neg negative, we're looking at the y values. So if I have, let's say, some graph that looks like this, the positive is any part above the x-axis. So this is the positive. And then the negative is any part below the x-axis, where the y values are negative. So basically, we then have these holes on the x-axis, because that's where y equals 0. That's not where y is positive or negative. So for these, we also want to use open brackets when we're talking about where is it positive versus where it's negative because we don't want to include where y equals 0. We want to either be positive or less than 0. So if we look at this graph, positive is going to be here and here. That's where it's above the x-axis. So it looks like it's positive um, all the way up to this point here. So I believe this is a negative 2. So we're going to just call this negative 2. It's hard to read these. So from negative 2 to or negative infinity to negative 2, it's positive. So negative infinity to negative 2. Again, when you talk about positive, you're talking about where the y value is positive, but you define them using the x values. So I'm always going to be stating these intervals, um, basically giving the x values where these y values are doing these different things. So negative infinity to negative 2, it's positive, as well as... 0 to 1. And then it's negative right in here. So from negative 2 to 0. And then from 1 to infinity. Because this graph is just going to keep going down. Now notice again I use open brackets because you don't want to include where y equals 0. You just want to include um, where y is greater than 0 and where y is less than 0. So we always are going to use open brackets for these as well. So we're looking at the y values, but we're stating the x values, where these y values are positive or negative. So then the last couple of things here, um, one of them is called boundedness. So basically, if the graph is bounded, um, just means that it has like a minimum or it has a maximum. It stops at a certain point. So if you look at this first example, this graph is not bounded above or below because this graph is just going to keep on going. It's going to keep increasing up, and it's going to keep decreasing. So there's no part where the graph just bounces up and continues or bounces down and continues forever. Where if you look at this example, it's going to keep going up, so it's not bounded above, but it is bounded below because it's never going to go below this point. So that would be called bounded below. This example is bounded above because it's never going to go past those two points, but it is going to keep on going down, so it's not bounded below. In this graph, we consider bounded because we have these points 
where the graph's going to hit there and it's going to hit down here. Um, and I'm going to actually put endpoints on this. So that's why it's bounded because it's never going to go past those points. But we do have to put endpoints on there. And then, so bounded means bounded above and below. So bounded above and below when we say bounded. So that kind of leads us to our next thing, which is our local and absolute extrema. So what that means is our maximum and minimum. So if something's bounded above or below, that means there's going to be a maximum point or a minimum point. So maximum is going to be the largest y value. And we have two types. We have the relative or the local, and then we have the absolute. The difference is the relative is over any interval. So it's over a specific interval, so just a portion of the graph. So this is over a portion of the graph. where when we're looking at the absolute, that's over the entire function. So that means it's the absolute highest point over the entire graph. So the same thing with minimum. Minimum is the smallest y value. So we have our relative or our local where it's the smallest value over just a portion. So again, this would be over a portion of the graph, so a specific section. where absolute minimum is going to be the smallest over the entire function. So it's the absolute smallest. So it's easy to remember because I just think of it as it's the absolute smallest or it's the absolute biggest in order to be the absolute maximum. And then the relative is the max or min relative to a specific area. So let's look at this example. So we look at this and we know right away, so I'm going to say that we have this point P and point R and point Q are going to be good points to look at. Um, so I know that point P is definitely going to be a maximum, but it's not the maximum of the entire function. It's the maximum if I'm looking at maybe just this specific portion. So this is called the relative maximum because it's only a maximum over a specific portion. Once I include this section with R, then R is the absolute highest point. So I can say that P and R are both on relative maxima or maximum points. Because if I look at just this section, then yes, R is a maximum. If I look at this section, then P is a maximum. So that's why they're maximums or relative maximums is over just a specific area. Q is also going to be a minimum. Um, it's going to be both, well, in this case, I have this point over here that's lower. So if these had arrows on them, or if they keep on going, we can say that Q is going to be a relative minimum because it's a minimum over a certain section, but it's not a minimum to the entire graph. So we have Q is a relative minimum. And then in terms of absolute maximum and minimums, I don't have an absolute minimum because I have arrows, so this graph is just going to keep on going. So there's no absolute minimum. But I do have an absolute maximum. The highest point this graph will ever go to is going to be R because it's going to continue going down, but the highest point will be at R. So it has R is an absolute maximum. So basically, what that kind of tells you, too, is that relative minimums may also be the absolute maximum, depending on the graph. So since R is a specific, it's a maximum over a specific region, and it's a maximum over the entire thing, that's why it's both a relative max and an absolute max. 
Q can only be a relative minimum because it's not the lowest point over the entire function. And P can only be a relative maximum because it's only a maximum over a specific interval if I only look at a certain section of the graph. 